Senator, good afternoon to you. Always a pleasure to have you. And I, I mean, isn't that if there were as many of these vague, vaguely discussed threats as Jen Psaki and other Democrats are listing? I mean, I would imagine if it's serious enough to have the DOJ weigh in on this, then I would imagine there are police reports that they could share with the press so we could actually see the severity of what we're dealing with. Correct. Uh, you would think I'm just amazed Dana, and it's good to be with you. I'm just amazed that the administration has finally found some kind of crime that it's supposed to. Oh, I yeah. mean, this is an administration that's presiding over the biggest crime surge in American history year over year. Uh, they're fine with rioting. They're fine with uh, apparently the huge spike in homicides, violent crime. But parents, if you want to go to a school board meeting, oh, the FBI is going to come knock on your door. I mean, this is incredibly abusive. It's blatantly an attempt to shut down taxpaying parents from speaking and expressing their views. It's very wrong. And all of this comes from speaking with Senator Josh Hawley. All of this comes from this letter that the National School Board uh, Association that they had sent to the administration begging for them to get involved. And even they even cited using the Patriot Act as a way to battle this. And I guess <clears throat> the left previously had pretended to abhor it. Now I guess they like the Patriot Act. How would that even work? And I mean, doesn't that's pretty much opened the door for them to kind of abuse the definition of what a domestic terrorist is and isn't, has it not? Oh, it has. It sounds like surveillance. I guess now we're going to have the FBI spying on parents who have kids and are paying their taxes and, and want to express their views about the people they elected. Let's not forget, school board members are elected. And so now you're saying you can't go to a public meeting and express your views to school board members without what? Again, having the FBI come and knock on your door? I mean, this is this is really outrageous and abusive data. I, I can't think of anything like this in American history. We've had federal law enforcement getting involved in local school board meetings in order to try and shut down speech that the president doesn't like. I mean, you talk about stepping towards authoritarianism. This is this is crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And I, for my part, I'm going to do everything I can to try and stop it. Well, and that's that's the big question, because we don't want to see it chill the speech and expression of these parents, because parents have been I, I, this is it sort of reminds me. It's the same energy of, of, of the Tea Party back in 2009. It very much has that same energy. And it's even, I think, politically, more politically diverse than even the Tea Party was. You, I, Parents Defending Education, for crying out loud, has a, a Democrat that is heading up that group. And she is uh, vociferously against uh, CRT and this institutionalized Marxist racism that's masquerading as education in kids' schools. You know, in, in our my community, where we were fighting uh, with our town school district, I mean, that's I mean, some of the most uh, vocal opposition is led by a Cuban family. Yet everyone is always whitewashed as being, oh, it's only white Republicans. And yet we know how difficult it is for everybody to speak out. So we've gone from calling everyone racist to now domestic terrorist. I, is that actually going to register and chill speech or is that going to make people angrier? Well, I hope that it makes people angry in the sense that they say, I'm not going to stand for this. I mean, I, this is America, after all. And we have a Constitution. And we have a First Amendment. But I think the intent of it is absolutely to try and shut down speech. That's the whole purpose of it. I mean, you and I both know that if somebody comes to a school board meeting and actually engages in violence, throws a punch or whatever, or threatens violence, the local police will shut that down ASAP. That, uh, we've got great local police in my state. I know we do all over the country. Like, that's not the issue. We're talking about getting the FBI involved for the purpose of intimidating people. That's what this is about. And if you look at the memorandum that the AG sent out, it doesn't just say violence. It says also potential intimidation or harassment. So, of course, they get to define what that means, the government does. You speak up against critical race theory, now you're harassing and the FBI comes knocking on your door. That is, they're definitely trying to intimidate voters by doing this. And again, this is wrong. I think it's unconstitutional and uh, we've got to resist it. Talking with Missouri Senator Josh Hawley. So how can parents, what do they do if, you know, say they go to a school board meeting, they're, they're simply doing what every other parent does, uh, speaking. And yes, they're angry and they can be angry when they speak to the school board. They're justifiably angry, but speaking in a loud tone itself is not unprotected speech. So what do they do, Senator, if there's if they actually do get that knock on the door? I mean, I think that would that would be terrifying for parents to deal with, especially knowing what you know, every all of the the controversies and scandals with the FBI just over the past several years. Uh, and what, what do they do if they get that knock on the door? How are what what should they do? How should they behave? Who where what can they do to protect themselves? 
Well, I think what they need to do is go public with that information. And I'll just say I personally would love to hear about it. If there's a parent out there who gets a call from the FBI because they go to their kid's school board meeting, they want to express a view, and they've waited, you know, they're trying to just speak up, uh, and the FBI comes to them or intimidates them, I want to hear about it. And that's something that needs to be made public. Uh, it's something that needs to be stopped because that is that is just wrong. And, I, you know, this is – you know you've lost the argument, can I just say, if you're Joe Biden. You know you've lost the argument when you're using the FBI to try to go after moms and dads because you don't like their speech. I mean, you talk about being somebody who's so out of touch and, frankly, dangerous. But that's just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. He wonders – why the American people are, are now opposed to his policies, why they don't support what he's doing, why they're, they, they think he's not up to the job. This is why. It's this kind of outrageous behavior, and we just we can't stand for it. Yeah. Talking with Missouri Senator Josh Hawley. Senator, I have to ask you, have you heard of the potential conflict of interest that Merrick Garland, Attorney General Merrick Garland, may have? The New York Post has written about this. Uh, it's been published in a couple of other areas. They say he's under scrutiny after... Uh, one of those groups that of parents that he would like to target, Parents Defending Education, revealed that his daughter, according to New York Post, is married to the co-founder of an education company funded by Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg that allegedly employs critical race theory in its work. This is this panorama education. They also data mine students. And his daughter is married to the co-founder of that panorama education group. I'm I'm curious is that is that enough to do to, to have to hold a hearing on and get to the, the bottom of as to what is motivating Merrick Garland's declared war on parents? Well, I certainly think that these are those are questions that need to be asked, and he is going to be before Congress, before the Senate, uh, here in the next couple of weeks. And so, you know, I, he's got to be willing and ready. Uh, to answer questions under oath on that subject and many more, to be honest with you, Dana, because I, I have to tell you, Merrick Garland came into office, pro- and I didn't vote for him, but he came in promising that he would be non-political, that, that he would just go out there and follow the law. He has done anything but. This is a guy who has just turned over the keys to the Department of Justice, to the political hacks in the White House, and the way in particular that he has weaponized the FBI against his political opponents, against normal everyday citizens like moms and dads. I mean, it's just inexcusable. And I'm afraid it's, this guy you know, used to be a judge, Garland did. His reputation has just been bulldozed by what he is doing at DOJ, and it deserves to be, and he, he deserves to be held accountable. Now, you know, Senator, what's lost in this whole conversation and the DOJ's focus on parents is the behavior of many school boards and many school officials and their treatment of parents. You had, for instance, Terry McAuliffe, who's out there running for governor of Virginia, saying that parents don't have the right to come in and tell school boards what can or can't be taught in schools. And there's really this belief on the left and from a lot of these school officials that once a child crosses the threshold into that educational facility, quote unquote educational, that parents lose all rights and there's no there's no personal sovereignty anymore. And that seems to be a shared belief amongst Democrats, like an unofficial unofficial platform. What is your reaction to some of these sound bites you've been hearing from these officials? Well, I, you know, I, I want to go back to the point that you made just a second ago, which is that these school board officials are elected officials and they're accountable to their voters. And guess what? It's the right of their voters and the right of taxpaying parents to show up and say, I disagree with you. And they, they don't have to use the words you want them to use. I mean, there's a huge difference between making violent threats and just saying that, you know what, I'm angry with your decisions. And to, if we get to the point where elected officials are able to criminalize speech they don't like, then we don't live in a free country anymore. And that's why what Biden is trying to do here is so dangerous. Mm-hmm. You talk about taking us down a path that is dangerous to the Constitution. This is it. So, you know, I, I, listen, I'm a, I'm a public official. People yell at me all the time. <laughs> that's part <laughs> of my job. You know, I mean, people have the right to express their views. And you can't say that, oh, I don't want to hear them. I, I don't like the tone in which you said that. If they threaten you, if they're, if they're doing something illegal – yeah, sure, that should stop. Mm. But uh, just because you don't like their speech doesn't mean that you can you can shut them down. And Biden is wrong to try to do it. Yeah, Senator Josh Hawley, you say your your people yell at you. It's part of the job, but they don't follow you in the restroom. That's not part of the process. No. Although that's yeah. what the president has said. Uh, your thoughts on that after seeing after that whole big bust up? I mean, I really hope that I would hate to see Democrats mainstream this, which I think they're trying to mainstream this this ridiculous behavior of actually following following people into these private spaces. Yeah, with a camera, no less. I mean, following Senator Cinema into a bathroom with a camera filming, which, by the way, that's illegal. That's a violation of law. Plus, plus just 
I mean, since when is it wrong as a leftist? When can you no longer be a decent human being? I mean, mm. why would anybody think that there's anything reasonable about following somebody into a bathroom with a camera? I mean, that's weird. It's illegal, and it's just weird. Who's and responsible, not to interrupt you, but who's responsible for bringing charges yeah. against the people that committed that, that crime? Well, I mean, I would think it's, it's, it's up to, um, it would be up to the local police there. And this is, I think it was at ASU, so the Phoenix area and Tempe, it would be up to them to, uh, to bring the charges. But I, I know it's a violation of their state law, mm-hmm. and certainly it isn't the state of Missouri. You can't film people in bathrooms. I yeah. mean, how, what's going on here? And the fact that the Democrats won't come out and say that, unequivocally say, listen, this is crazy and weird to follow people around with cameras in the bathroom. Stop doing it. They, they won't do it. They were trying to get a statement together, Dana, you know, classic congressman, trying to put a statement together. And they couldn't even do that because they couldn't agree, the Democrats among themselves, that this was wrong to do. I mean, it's the left is really getting weird these days. And uh, I just think it's time for normal, decent people to say, this is crazy. It needs to stop. I, I completely agree with you. And hopefully maybe that point can be made. After midterms, that would be that would be something lovely to see. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley. Senator, appreciate your voice out there. Thank you so much for your time today. We'll talk again soon. God bless. Thanks for having me. Of course.